This video lesson is on the organization of Congress and Congress in action. How and when does Congress convene? Congress convenes every two years on January 3rd of every odd-numbered year. The House has formal organizational meetings at the beginning of each term to determine committee membership and standing officers. The Senate, because it is a continuous body, has fewer organizational issues to address at the start of each term. When Congress is organized, the President presents a State of the Union message to a joint session of Congress. This message in which the President reports on the state of the nation as he sees it is given annually. What are the roles of the presiding officers in the Senate and the House? The Speaker of the House is the presiding officer of the House of Representatives and the acknowledged leader of the majority party. The Speaker's main duties revolve around presiding over and keeping order in the House. The Speaker names the members of all select and conference committees and signs all bills and resolutions passed by the House. The Constitution designates the Vice President as President of the Senate. The President of the Senate has many of the same duties as the Speaker of the House, but cannot cast votes on legislation except to break a tie. The president pro tempore, the leader of the majority party, is elected from the Senate and serves in the vice president's absence. What are the duties of party officers in Congress? The party caucus is a closed meeting of the members of each party in each house, which deals with matters of party organization. The floor leaders are party officers picked for their posts by their party colleagues. The party whips assist the floor leaders and serve as a liaison between the party's leadership and its rank and file members. How are committee chairmen chosen and what is their role in the legislative process? The committee chairmen are members who head the standing committees in each chamber of Congress. The chairman of each of these permanent committees is chosen from the majority party by the majority party caucus. The seniority rule, an unwritten custom, holds that the most important posts will be held by those party members with the longest records of service in Congress. The head of each committee is often the longest serving member of the committee from the majority party. How do the standing committees function? The standing committees are permanent panels in Congress to which bills of similar nature can be sent. Most of the standing committees handle bills dealing with particular policy matters such as veterans affairs or foreign relations. The majority party always holds a majority of the seats on each committee. What are the duties and responsibilities of the House Rules Committee? The Rules Committee decides whether and under what conditions the full House will consider a measure. This places great power in the Rules Committee as it can speed, delay, or even prevent House action on a measure. The Select Committees are panels established to handle a specific matter and usually exist for a limited time. Most Select Committees are formed to investigate a current matter. What are the functions of Joint and Conference Committees? Joint committees consist of both House and Senate members, similar in purpose to select committees, and they're meant to draw attention to issues. Conference committees consist of both House of Representatives and Senators, formed to hammer out differences between House and Senate versions of similar bills. What are the first steps in introducing a new bill to the House? A bill is a proposed law presented to the House or Senate for consideration. A bill or resolution usually deals with a single matter, but sometimes a rider dealing with an unrelated matter is included. The clerk of the House numbers each bill, gives it a short title, and enters it into the House Journal and the Congressional Record for the day. 
With these actions, the bill has received its first reading. Types of bills and resolutions. A bill, proposed law or draft of a law, public bill applies to the entire nation. Private bill applies only to certain people or places. Joint resolution, a proposal for action that has the force of law when passed, usually deals with special circumstances or temporary matters. Concurrent resolution, a statement of position on an issue used by the House and Senate acting jointly, does not have the force of law, does not require the President's signature, and a resolution, a measure relating to the business of either House or expressing an opinion on a matter, does not have the force of law, does not require the President's signature. What happens to a bill once it enters a committee? Most bills die in committee, pigeonholed, or put away, never to be acted upon. If a committee pigeonholes a bill that a majority of the House wishes to consider, it can be brought out of committee via a discharge position. Most committees do their work through several subcommittees. These are subdivisions of existing committees formed to address specific issues. Committees and subcommittees often hold public hearings or make a junket, meaning trip, to gather information relating to a measure. When a subcommittee has completed its work on a bill, it returns to the full committee. The full committee may do one of several things. Report the bill favorably with a due pass recommendation. Refuse to report the bill. Report the bill in amended form. Report the bill with unfavorable recommendation or report a committee bill. How do House leaders schedule debate on a bill? A bill is placed into one of five calendars before going to the floor for consideration. The calendar of the Committee of the Whole House on the State of the Union, the House calendar, the calendar of the Committee of the Whole House, the consent calendar, or the discharge calendar. Before most measures can be taken from a calendar, the Rules Committee must approve that step and set a time for its appearance on the floor. They meet as the Committee of the Whole, which includes all members of the House. However, they sit as one large committee and not as the House itself. When the Committee of the Whole resolves itself, the Speaker steps down and another member presides. General debate follows. Several limits are placed on floor debate due to the House's large size. Majority and minority floor leaders generally decide in advance how they will split the time to be spent on a bill. What happens to a bill on the House floor? There are four methods of taking a floor vote in the House. First, during voice votes, the Speaker calls for the ayes and the nays. Second, in a standing vote, members in favor of, for, and then those opposed to a bill rise and then are counted by the clerk. Third, one-fifth of a quorum can demand a teller vote in which the Speaker names two tellers, for and against, and members pass by each one to be counted. Fourth, a roll call may be demanded by one-fifth of the members present. What is the final step in passing a bill in the House? Once a bill has been approved at a second reading, it is engrossed or printed in its final form. It is then read for a third time and then a final vote is taken. How is a bill introduced in the Senate? Bills are introduced by senators who are formally recognized for that purpose. Proceedings are much less formal in the Senate compared to the House. How do the Senate's rules for debate differ from those in the House? The major difference between House and Senate rules regarding debates over measures. As a general matter, senators may speak on the floor for as long as they wish. This freedom of debate allows for the fullest possible discussion of matters on the floor. A filibuster is an attempt to talk a bill to death. A senator may exercise his or her right of holding the floor as long as necessary 
and in essence talk until a measure is dropped. Rule 22 in the standing rules of the Senate deals with closure or limiting debate. If at least 60 senators vote for closure, no more than another 30 hours may be spent on debate forcing a vote on a bill. What is the role of conference committees in the legislative process? Any measure enacted by Congress must have been passed by both houses in identical form. If one of the houses will not accept the other's version of a bill, a conference committee is formed to iron out the differences. Once a conference committee completes work on a bill, it is returned to both houses for final approval. It must be accepted or rejected without amendment. What actions can the president take after both houses have passed the bill? The Constitution provides four options for the president when he receives a bill. The president may sign the bill and then it becomes the law. The president may veto the bill or refuse to sign it. The president's veto can be overridden by two-thirds votes of the members present in each house. If the president does not act upon a bill within 10 days of receiving it, it becomes law. A pocket veto occurs if Congress adjourns within 10 days of submitting a bill and the president does not sign it. The bill then dies.